Hello. Today we're going to learn how to work with the infrastructure monitoring policies that are available in TrueSight Operations Management. The infrastructure monitoring policies are one of the most powerful features that bring efficiency to managing all the monitoring you're doing within your enterprise. So let's get started and see how that works. As you can see, I've logged into TrueSight with my administrative privilege and I'm going to use the navigation area and I'm going to make my way down to configuration and of course these little blips here will help you work with that but if I click on infrastructure policies <clears throat> you can see that I only have two this is a relatively new installation for me so I only have a couple policies that I created to kind of test if my infrastructure was working correctly so what we're going to do is create a new policy and in this case, I'd like to monitor the CPU utilization on a single server. So we're going to go ahead and hit Create Policy. And you can see we get a nice dialog box here that lets us fill in all our information. I'm going to call this CPU Monitor on Single Windows Server. And of course, when you're doing this, you want to put as much information that's relevant so that when you get more and more policies, it's very clear what each policy does and, and what targets you're looking for there. Um, there's lots of things that you can set. You can choose to share this policy with other users of TrueSight. You can enable the policy. The precedence is very important. I've started a scheme in my environment where policies related to Windows servers are in the 500 series. You could see that the default was 900. There's good best practice information online about how to manage the precedence and when you get more and more policies, you know, following what BMC recommends on how to manage that. Um, I recommend looking at the documentation on that, but I'm going to stick with my scheme there. The lower the number, the higher the priority is, is a basic rule of thumb there. So now that I've done that, I have to identify what agents I'd like this policy to apply to. So I can start my syntax here and you can see that because I haven't closed my parentheses, I immediately get a little a helpful little note there telling me that my, my work isn't done here. There's different criteria that you can search for. Um, you know, you can say, for example, the operating system contains, right? for example, and I could put Windows here, and this would give me all Windows servers that I find in my environment. But in this particular case, I know that I'm looking for a particular host. And again, I could put matches, ends with, start with, so if I wanted to search for a, a range of servers, I could do that. But in this case, I know that my server, which is my ITDA server, in my environment is identified with that host name. So if I close the parentheses, another new helpful feature is a preview. If I click this button, it's going to show me if I've done my syntax correctly and if there are any targets out there that it's going to find. This is a really nice new feature that lets you check this before you create your policy and deploy it so you know exactly what it's going to apply to. So now that I have that all taken care of, I need to add a monitoring configuration. And this monitoring configuration identifies what things I want this policy um, to go out and do for me. And in this case, all I want is CPU utilization. So I hit my Add Monitoring Configuration button. I'm going to, again, get a nice dialog box. Uh, what it's doing right now is loading all the different parameters that I have loaded in my repository. And you can see I can scroll down here and I have lots of things um, loaded up but I'm particularly interested in the Microsoft Windows servers in this case. If there were a variety of versions that I had loaded, I would be able to choose that here um, in the monitoring profile. So of the Microsoft Windows servers monitoring solution, what am I looking for in this particular case? Um, right now I'm looking for CPU utilization and I believe that's under operating system. Um, the nice thing about these dialog boxes is if you're not 100% sure before you get started with this process, you can do a little clicking and dragging to try to find what you're looking for. And there it is under, under operating system, there's my CPU performance. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. If I wanted to, I could narrow it down, as you see with a little helpful pop-up. I could monitor, for example, just processor 0 or 1 or 2 or however many there might be. Or if there's ones that I, I know I want to include, for example, or only include, I could do that also. In this case, I'm going to pick all of them. So I go ahead and hit OK. So there we have our, the basic thing that we want to include. 
There's other options that we can use. Uh, for example, filtering, if I wanted to filter certain things out, I could do that. I can set a polling interval. And in this particular case, I do want to do that. So we're going to pick the same things we picked for our, um, our monitoring configuration here. And I think we want to CPU performance. And we can pick how frequently we want that to work. In this particular case, three minutes is fine for me, just to test. So now we have a polling interval, we have a monitoring configuration. You can set basic thresholds um, for both the server and the agent at this level. Um, again, I'm not gonna get too much into the details here, but you can, if I open it up, you can see that we can do exactly the same thing. If we, we migrate down, um, we can go to CPU performance and uh, pick exactly the same things that we saw before. Um, so if we wanted to set individual thresholds for these various things, we can do that here. Um, we can pick whether we throw an alarm and types of things like that it can all be done at this level. Same thing for the server threshold. Mm -hmm. At the agent level, we want to put in our account that we're going to use to connect to our patrol agents. And I'm typing in my credential here and I can identify the integration service that I'd like to use. And in this particular case, in my environment, I only have one. And I'm going to leave the rest uh, the default. Uh, there's different things that you could choose to do, um, but I'm just gonna go along with whatever the defaults are set for the integration service. And I can hit, um, there's also some server information I could include uh, if I wanted to. And I can hit configuration variables. If I wanted to add some additional configuration variables, I could do that here. I'm not going to in this particular case. Again, some of these advanced features, I recommend looking at the documentation um, to get a feel for why and when you would use those things. But in this particular case for our test, we're just gonna go ahead and hit save. If I've done anything incorrect, if I've picked something that's a duplicate, if I've made a, uh, an error in my um, options or selections, I'll get an error here that it's not correct. But if I've done everything correctly and it's ready to go, um, when it's done saving the policy, I should get a nice green uh, indicator that's successful, the policy has been created. And we can see here that our CPU monitor on a single window server is now active. And it has the precedence that I gave it. And working with infrastructure policies is that simple. Um, I, again, can't emphasize enough getting online, looking at the documentation, looking at some of the online videos uh, to get yourself very familiar with the inner workings of some of the details with working with policies. But this is a basic overview of how you work with policies and create a new monitoring policy. Thank you.